My name is John McCormick, and I'm professor of political science at the University of Chicago. Well, I think it's very obvious that democracy is in crisis all over the world, and from from both the United States to to Greece, we are in we are in crisis, and it's a very similar crisis, and maybe more severe in some places than others. But it is uh, a crisis of political accountability uh, and a crisis of inequality. That basically, political officials are completely unaccountable to their constituencies, uh, pursue their own agendas, or very often agendas other than those of their constituency. And this relates to the inequality problem that uh, the wealthy wealthy citizens and wealthy groups have disproportionate influence over the political system, over law and policy making, and over those uh, officials mentioned in the, the first part of the problem. So this is a mutually reinforcing problem of political inequality and uh, economic inequality, that economic inequality is what's fostering or driving this uh, accountability crisis. Well, populism is both a symptom and a potential solution to the crisis. I mean, it is, it's inevitable that you would get populism in modern democracies, because modern democracies uh, promise something that they don't deliver. Modern, promise, modern democracies promise that the people rule, and yet the people realize that they, they do not rule. In their experience, they know that somebody seems to be ruling for them. And so populism is this response to political disaffection, political disempowerment on the part of modern citizenries who need something outside of the institutions of democracy to make them feel heard. Uh, so I think that it is a, an obvious symptom of this problem of inequality and inaccountability in modern democracies. Now it can be a vehicle or a cure, a vehicle toward uh, a cure or a correction if populist movements take on as their goals uh, institutional reforms, political reforms, social reforms that encourage people to govern themselves through new institutions of direct democracy, uh, through more strict uh, and uh, uh, more strict surveillance uh, uh, devices of political and economic elites. If populist movements make these kind of reforms their goals, then I think populist movements can be uh, a vehicle for renewed, reinvigorated democracy. I think people do confuse populism with democracy itself, and I think that's uh, a mistake. That's, that's one of the problems intellectually or conceptually uh, besetting a lot of discussion of democratic theory and practice today. Um, democracy is a form of government through which the people rule, and the people rule themselves. Populism, in some ways, is just an alternative form of representative democracy or electoral democracy because others, either a party or a leader, uh, claim to rule on behalf of the people. And so a mass mobilization or a mass movement that is identified as populist may be necessary to bring about democracy, but it cannot be democracy itself. And it can, we cannot confuse uh, having a leader or, an, or a party acting on behalf of the citizenry. Confuse that with being a democracy, because that would be making a very similar mistake as when we confused parliaments or presidents or uh, institutions associated with electoral democracy as being equivalent to, to democracy. So I think the two are distinct, although one can serve the other. Populism can and should serve democracy. Thank you.